Okay, class. So uh, my name is Louis Overmuller. I have a PhD in molecular and cellular biology and biochemistry that I got from ASU in 1999. <clears throat> so I do uh, my expertise is in things that are small. I teach genetics at ASU. I teach micro occasionally at MCC. Um, I also teach genetics occasionally at MCC. Biochemistry, um, uh, biotechnology and intro bio for majors because in uh, the first section because that deals with small things uh, molecular and cellular things 182 is bigger it's broader it's more about ecology and comparative anatomy and things like that so i don't teach 182 i don't teach anatomy um i don't i don't really know much about that um my expertise is uh, uh, small so uh, like virology things like that um and so that's why they had me teach in this course. Um, so I will be your host uh, for the semester. Um, last semester was the first time that we taught this class fully online. So there's things that have, um, we've changed since then, uh, things that we've updated and some lessons that we've learned from last semester. And we will continue to learn this semester as well. Um, uh, the plan for the department is that we go back to in-person learning in the fall of 2021 but for right now everything's online my classes um uh the the lectures are delivered through um youtube and then there is a thing called panopto that the school pays for uh that's in canvas and so most of the things that we could do are going to be through canvas um and so i'm just going to go over uh how canvas works so I've just, uh, you, you guys will see a yellow circle when I move my mouse around. I can't see that. Um, and then I think it changes to blue when I click on things. But um, regardless, so we're going to start off at mesacc.edu. And this is what you'll see. And it talks a little bit about COVID and things like that. Um, there's a lot of tutoring resources and things that you can use uh, when you can't get a hold of me. Um, and so I'll go over those as well, but this is sort of the portal that you'll need to access those tutorings, uh, different tutoring systems and things like that. So, uh, the first thing you want to do is click on Canvas and that's going to bring you to your classes. Of course, this is going to be different, uh, than, uh, what I see here. These are, so I'm teaching three lectures, uh, six labs. Um, the since the lecture and labs are combo classes i put each of the classes individually as just lecture sections and then the labs are included in there as well and you'll see now you might not be in the exact same section that i'm going to cover but it doesn't matter because every single section this semester is exactly the same the only difference is that i'm going to actually do live lectures uh, for uh, section uh, 32 4, 10. it doesn't mean you have to attend them um, and in fact, uh, I'll give, I'll share a link for everyone if they want to attend the live lectures, they can. The reason I'm doing that is because I want, I want input from students. I don't like doing a lecture, uh, where I'm just talking, uh, to a computer screen. I like the interaction of, uh, having students around. And so I'm going to try to conduct some classes, um, either in Zoom or more likely in Google Meet, although I don't think I can record in Google Meet, but I can get around that with, uh, screen capturing software another disclaimer i'm going to tell you is my computer crashed over the weekend my solid state drive in my laptop where i normally have my office uh, so i'm using my desktop uh, which is downstairs and i have no way to shut a door because it's an open kind of concept house and so you're going to hear a lot of screaming babies and well i have one i have a one-year-old and then i have an 11 year old and i have a 17 year old and uh my wife and so on so you're going to hear a lot of commotion in the background and i apologize for that uh once i get this drive fixed or if i get a different computer uh hopefully um then when i do the lectures it will not uh be so busy in the background Anyway, so the first thing uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this link. You will see a link, and these courses aren't published yet because I wanted to finish this video before I post it. So we're going to do section uh, 32410, which is one of the 
lectures and you'll see that there's different tabs over here on the left their home and as announcements and assignments and all that good stuff um so for the uh home tab you'll see there'll be an intro video this will be the video that i'm recording right now this one actually links to the one from last semester and like i said we we've, we've learned a few things so things are going to be different these are the links to tutoring. Uh, there's two different kinds of tutoring and, and, and you can also use me as a tutor. So that's the third option. But then obviously, you know that, um, uh, I will have office hours and I'll show you that in the syllabus, but MCC also has a virtual tutoring center. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the hours are, but if you click on this link, it should take you to a new tab that says open in a new tab and we'll open that and it will say, Tutors return on Tuesday, January 19th, and then you can go and click on to the tutoring and it'll t show you the various tutors. So this is an anatomy tutor, uh, a bio tutor. Uh, these are all anatomy. Here's a 181 tutor. And then, you know, they're not all online, but they will be uh, online whenever um, classes start. And it'll tell you the hours. It looks like it's uh, nine to four. Uh, for some people, some people haven't put their hours in here, but this is a one place where you can get tutoring help outside of class. Let me go ahead and close that. And then we'll go back to the main screen here. Uh, and then there's a thing called Brain Fuse. And you click on that and it'll open it in a new window. And Brain Fuse is a site that uh, it's a uh, international tutoring system and so it's open usually 24 7. Um, you get 10 hours of tutoring online through this and it's pretty simple you just enter your MEID and your password and click on that and then I'm not an active student so I cannot use this but I have used it before um, it's pretty good so I trust it and I think that they'll give you uh, good responses to any questions that you may have. So uh, keep in mind, this is a limited amount because it's it's paid for by the school. Um, but, you know, if you need it, it's there. So I'm going to close this out and we'll go back to the main uh, schedule here. And then so this is the tutoring systems. That I will have weekly office hours Monday through Thursday, 2 to 2.50 p.m. Um, and that will start uh, tomorrow because today is a, a holiday. Today is the 18th MLK Day. Uh, so tomorrow, Tuesday from 2 to 2.50, I'll be online and you can link uh, to my office hours. So just click on that and it's through Google Meet. And I won't bore you with that, but you probably have seen meetings or done online meetings before. I don't record the office hours because you guys might have personal stuff. Um, I also can put people out in the lobby um, if you want to ask me something in private or whatever. Um, but that's open to all students and that, this is for all of my classes, not just this section. So um, that's when you can ask me questions. That's when I'm, I'm your tutor for this class. Um, and just keep in mind, I am the best tutor since I'm the one that makes the tests. Okay, so the, if you haven't used Canvas before, you can click on this, and this is the Canvas guide. One of your assignments is going to be to, to post a profile picture. Um, in Canvas, and I generally do this so that I can match names to faces for the classes, and also to make sure that you're taking the class, and it's not like your cousin, sister's, nieces. Uh, second uh, cousin once removed or whatever so it'll tell you how how do you add a profile picture um, in my account as a student and you can click on that and it will tell you how to upload the picture um, and all that stuff and you'll get 10 extra credit points for doing this now um, the one caveat if you want your points is it has to be a picture of you so don't take a picture of a panda like this student has done and post it because that's not really the purpose of it so i just i want you to post a picture of yourself like i said so i can put a name to a face and later on when you do the labs you're going to have to take selfies 
to prove it's you doing the lab. So make sure that the picture you post up there matches the picture that you're going to be taking selfies with. <coughs> okay. So that is how we can you can navigate through Canvas if you have any questions on that. These are the, how the lectures are delivered. So we, there's two ways. Panopto, I'll show you Panopto real quick. So Panopto, um, these are videos that recorded a few years ago. Um, the reason that, that I didn't add any new videos to Panopto is that the school said they weren't going to pay for the service anymore. And then they changed their mind because a bunch of professors balked at the whole thing. And so um, now Panopto is back. But I haven't really messed with it because I was worried they would take it away. So I moved everything to YouTube. Although I like Panopto better, and so I might try to use Panopto again this semester when I do the live lectures. Um, and I'm, I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do those lectures from um, like 1.45 to 2. But I'll put the link in there so that you, you'll know when they're going to go down. Um, okay, so... Um, you have to click on 50 results per page. There's two such of lectures. There's some for 2016 and 2017. Um, these are the ones that I would use down here. Um, and the only reason is, is because these goes by chapters. Um, so we have chapter one and chapter two and three. And, and so the, the lecture numbers are here. The chapter numbers are here, four and five. And so you know that if you watch all these videos from here all the way to to here that covers uh all with the everything that you need for the first exam plus the review chapters one through five and then this is chapter six seven eight nine and so on and so each of these are kind of divided down by chapters but make sure you click on this 50 because by default it's only going to show you 25 so when you scroll to the end you're only going to have the dates lectures and not the chapter lecture so click on that 50 and make sure that you can get down to these other lectures all right and then you just click on the lecture and you watch the video so it's just kind of like a regular lecture there i am um uh this is the the screen what so whatever i see on the screen is being recorded in a separate thing and then these are the powerpoints uh which are shown here some of my students like to speed this up so because they think they talk too slow, so you can go through the lecture at double time. All right, all right. Uh, so, I'm gonna, so I'm going to slow it down. Have back, layers back layers upon layers of back up here, uh, so I have. Uh, uh, and you can flip these around. You can change the video from that camera. Change it back to the audio screen from this microphone. And you can go forward and back. There's another microphone there, there in the ceiling that it's recording. So this is the captions are pretty bad. It doesn't really know what I say. The screen to the time, capture too, along with the camera and the. Um. So anyway, uh, once you complete this entire video, then that'll be uh. This was done in live lectures, and you can see I have students in here. I know that you can't see what's written on the whiteboard, but don't worry about it. Normally what's written on the whiteboard is the same stuff that I've taken off the slides. Um, I just like to do that. And I'm and I'm going to do that when I make these new lecture videos from the live uh, lectures that I'm going to hold this semester. So, um, but it'll be on a virtual whiteboard instead of an actual whiteboard. So, anyway. Once you finish that, um, and then, so you've watched the lecture for, let's just pretend that this is all of chapter one. It's not, but it's part of chapter one. Once you finish all of chapter one, um, then you want to go back. Uh, to the main system and uh, you don't have to use Panopto. You can use YouTube video. It's the exact same thing, except everything's condensed into one video. Um, these are the PowerPoints. You can download them if you want. So this is the PowerPoints that I cover in the lecture. Usually it it um, can read it, but I, whatever for whatever reason my computer's slow. And it's probably because I haven't used it in a while. So anyway, these are the PowerPoints, right? And so you can go and you can look at all the PowerPoints. 
Now, uh, one thing I'm going to tell you is that I can't put every single thought on a PowerPoint. It, was, it would read just like a textbook, and that's kind of overwhelming for students. So these are bullet points, and I'll speak about each of these in detail. So don't just study the PowerPoints. Make sure that you're studying what I say about the PowerPoints as well. And then use your text to fill in any of the blanks that you're not sure about. So I'm not going to test you on anything that I, wouldn't, I didn't verbally say in lecture or a concept that we didn't like verbally talk about. And then uh, I show you how to apply it to different things. So, for example, we might c calculate molarity of a certain solution. It could be for an IV bag, for example. But once you learn how to do molarity, you should be able to apply that to anything else, whether it's molarity of vaccines for the COVID virus or molarity for making, you know, uh, hydrochloric acid or sodium hydroxide or any other thing, uh, any mixture that you make up. Uh, molarity is how it's done in science. It's kind of like, uh, how, you know, teaspoons and tablespoons and things like that you use in cooking. Um, but, but we use a universal system. All right. So I'm going to close out this PowerPoint. We'll go back and you can do each of the PowerPoints. So, so go over the PowerPoints, right? Um, once you finish the PowerPoints and watching the lecture for the chapter, you're going to do the crossword puzzles. These are definitions that you need to learn. You don't have to do uh, crossword puzzles. If you hate them, make flashcards. I don't care. In fact, there's a flashcard maker uh, that you can use, StudyMate, right here. And you can uh, go through this, and you and it will help you make flashcards for these. I just thought crossword puzzles would be more fun, and so that's why I use crossword puzzles. So uh, every chapter has its own crossword puzzle, and we'll just go back to the first one. So the, this one says, a complete genetic code of an organism. So that if, you, if you watched the chapter one lecture and listened to it and took notes while you were listening to the lecture, just like you would in the classroom, you would know the answer to this is genome. Uh, and so two across is genome. And... I don't take these up. I you know, don't expect you to turn them in uh, because I don't know if you want to do crosswords or you want to make flashcards. Uh, but you can check your answers here. And so it says crossword puzzle answers and you just click on chapter one answers and we can make sure that our, we are indeed correct and, and that's true. Two across is genome. So you need to know all of these definitions uh, for the exam. And I will ask you on the exam these definitions. So make sure you do the crosswords and know the answers to all of them from the questions for every chapter. Okay, so there are also study guides for every chapter. Um, so for example, uh, this is a classification vocabulary. You're going to need to know that. So when we get to the classification section of chapter one, you'll see that uh, when we talk about organisms, we talk about them as autotrophic or you uh, karyotic, uh, heterotrophic, modal, sessile, unicellular, multicellular. So these words, they may be foreign words to you. In fact, most of biology is from uh, Greek and Latin. So you need to be able to define this. So you need to know if I'm a biologist and I'm talking to you about a sessile organism, that means it doesn't move, right? If I'm talking and I tell you it's modal, that means it moves. So you need to know all the definitions for each of these. Um, we'll go back to the files and there's, there's a couple study guides for chapter one. So we, there are kingdom questions here, uh, on the exam, you'll need to know, uh, the answers to these as well. And you, you'll need to be able to pick out, uh, what kingdoms each organism, uh, belongs to based on what questions I ask you on the test. So you'll see something like this on the test. It'll say it's green, multicellular, sessile, and it has cellulose cell walls. Well, if you looked at the lecture for chapter one, you would know that we talked about uh, organisms that are green, sometimes do photosynthesis. We for sure know that cellulose is uh, part of the component of the cell wall 
that's exclusive to plants. So I know this is a plant. It also does not move. It's sessile and it's multicellular. So this kingdom right here for number two is plant. They're planting. Um, this one is one cell organisms that are eukaryotic. So there's one cell organisms that are prokaryotic and that would be bacteria or the monera. But this tells me they're eukaryotic. And so that narrows it down to the prokaryotes. And some of them move and some of them don't. Uh, but those are things that you need to know. Um, and then it'll there are questions like, uh, what group is an order of descending uh, variety? That means uh, it's decreasing in the amount of variation that it has, or it's more specific. And that's technically where the word species came from. So species would be the most specific and kingdom would be the most general. So which choice, the groups in order of descending uh, variety. So that means less variety. So this would be species would be the less, okay? And then this genus. And if you did chapter one, you would know that it's kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So this answer would be C. And this is kind of what you'll see on the quizzes and on the exams. Here's one, what's an acceptable way to write a scientific name for humans? Well, humans are homo sapiens, and there's a whole slide that we've done on this in chapter one. And we talked about how this is written. So uh, when you're writing genus and species, the species is always lowercase, which is right here. So this is out can't be written like this and this is out it can be written like this so a and b we can exclude the genus is always written capitalized so that's how we know it's a genus so c is out because both of these are lowercase so the answer has to be d homo sapiens and we either italicize it or underline it um and so since this is italicized if it wasn't italicized it would be wrong too since it's italicized and the genus is uppercase and the species is lowercase, D is the correct answer. And you would learn all that stuff from watching the lectures in chapter one. Okay, so I want you guys to do the reviews, the study guides for each of the chapters. Uh, in genetics, there's problem sets, so practice problem sets, so that you can, you know, this is a ways away, but they're in here. And uh, it'll have genetics problems like several black guinea pigs uh, of the same genotype and you'll know what that term is because you'll be proficient in the words of biology by doing the crossword puzzles right 29 black and 9 white offspring what would you predict the genotypes of the parents to be so uh, you're not going to know you I mean you might have gotten some of that in high school so you might know how to do this but some of these are kind of advanced uh, questions about genetics and so this kind of this is the answers to that and this explains how uh, so what we figure it out is that these are heterozygous that means they have one allele for black and one allele for white and both of the parents are uh, heterozygous for that condition but they would also both appear to be black um, and so I want when you guys get to genetics, you're going to need to practice these problems because these are the problems that you'll see on the exam. <clears throat> okay. The, the I know this is a long time ago, but it's been a while since I've actually like recorded these classes. Um, and so these are the early most of the recordings are video. These are the ones that you know I I recorded with a tape recorder. There hasn't been a lot of change in the last three or so years of biology, so this is still relevant. If you want to listen to audio recordings, um, you can do, do these. These are all MP3s, so you can download them to your MP3 player or whatever, your phone, and listen to lectures if, let's say, you're out running or whatever, and you don't really want to watch a video. Okay. So that's all of the materials that you're going to have for this class. Um, the announcements will appear here. I ta I'll talk a little bit about the video and all this stuff. So I've already kind of labeled this out. If, if something happens, if I get sick or, you know, my kid gets hurt or whatever, uh, and I'm not going to be available for office hours or I'm, I'm not going to do the in-person lecture, then I will post it on here. I'll also post 
the class statistics on exams and things like that when the exams are done. Um, just to let you know, I, I need about a week to go through the grading because to, I know that you guys think that I'm just teaching one class, but I'm not. I'm actually teaching, you know, 150 students um, and I'm grading 150 labs every week. And so that takes in a massive amount of time. Um, so, so, uh, I try to get everything done as quickly as possible, but I'm also on committees and other things like that, that take me away from specifically focusing just on the classwork. Cause there's other things that I have to do for the school. And so, uh, usually a week, if it's more than a week, then, you know, uh, that's rare. Um, usually I get all of your work back then in a week. Okay. The assignments. So, um, every chapter you will have quizzes. So make sure that, you know, students ask me how to study. This is what I'll tell you. What you should do is watch the lectures and take notes, just like you were in a regular in-person classroom and everybody's been in a real classroom and everybody's taken notes in the classroom, right? If you do it through either Panopto or YouTube, you'll see the PowerPoint slides. But remember, the PowerPoint slides are just to give me direction. They're not exhaustive because those uh, slides would be super busy uh, if I put every thought on it. Okay, so... Um, each of the quizzes here for every chapter, and, and like I was explaining, go over the lecture, uh, take notes. Once you take the notes, go through all of the crossword puzzles, make sure that you know all the definitions, and then go through the study guides and make sure that you can answer all the questions on the study guide. Once you've done all that, then I would go ahead and start taking the quizzes. So for the quizzes, you get three chances uh, for each of the quiz and it tells you that right here you have three attempts it takes your highest grade right um, there's a bank of questions that i have written uh, that that it pulls from and so you won't get the same questions every time you take it uh, these questions are very similar to the exam questions so it's in your best interest even if you got a 10 out of 10 on the quiz to go ahead and take it all three times because you might get a, a some sort of insight into what questions that you'll see on the uh, each of the exams. So your view is going to be different than mine. Um, so I'm just going to click on preview here. Um, and so it'll ask, it asks questions like give the uh, cooperativity of science, which is the following, uh, is most likely to result in an investigator being intellectually looked down upon by other scientists. Um, and so we talk about this in chapter one. Uh, we talk about organisms uh, interacting with their environments, exchanging uh, matter and energy. Plant chloroplasts convert the energy of sunlight into, um, and the answer here is the potential energy of chemical bonds. And we cover that in lecture one. So you would be able to answer that question um, and so on. And then you, you're gonna answer all these questions and then in the end, You'll click submit quiz and then you'll get your grade. Um, and like I said, you can take this up to three times for each quiz. And there's a quiz for every single chapter. So uh, you'll see the due date for the quizzes correspond to the due date for the exam. Your first exam is, is due by February 24th at one minute to midnight. So all the quizzes for the first five chapters, which is what it covers, the first exam covers uh, are due the same time. And then your second exam is March 31st. So each of these quizzes, these it only covers chapters six, seven, eight, and nine for exam two. So uh, that's due March 31st is the exam. And so that's when the quizzes are due. This other stuff you can't see. This is stuff that I've hidden, uh, different labs uh, and stuff like that, different exams. Um, that I've given in the past. We no longer do the Sonoran Desert Plant Lab because you can't, well, I don't know what their rules are, but at the time last semester, they closed that down. So these are the labs. These are your at-home labs. And by the way, um, I dropped your five lowest quiz grades. So uh, 
those you'll see them grayed out in the grade book um, that just means the computer is automatically dropping them your at-home labs are here and this is the due date for your so your first lab is chemistry it's due February 2nd you click on that um, and these a lot of these were rewritten just for online classes so if you click on this and it'll download the Word document for the chemistry lab and so it, all you're going to need to do is just follow the directions of the lab and uh, there's various ways that you can submit this lab so you could scan this lab into a PDF and submit it that way you could take pictures of this lab off the screen so Uh, I'll have to order on this later. I apologize. Uh, anyway, so it'll say like what two functional groups are found in amino acids. So if you look up here, you'll see that there are functional groups that are labeled out, right? These are the functional groups. Um, so we have hydroxyl, carboxyl, amino, and really all you have to do is match it. So this NH2 amino is where amino acids get their name. So this amino acid is always going to have an NH2, so it has an amino group. And then this is a carboxylic acid group. So when you say it asks you to name the two functional groups in amino acids, you would say carboxylic acid, amino. Uh, so that's why it's called amino acid. Um, and then you're going to do the same thing for lipids and all the other and carbohydrates. Um, a lot of this stuff is in chapter five if you want to cross-reference it to it and then you're going to submit it on campus on canvas sorry so you can take pictures of it right you could print this out you could draw it you could take pictures of it you could draw it and you could scan it um you can use the draw function and um in office if you want and so like it it'll, it'll, might say Circle the amino acids, right? So, like, uh, so this is the amino group, and I can do that. I can do this in in Office, and let's say I want to circle the carboxylic acid group. So this is the carboxylic acid group here. This is a methyl group here, and then you could save this, right? And then you could just resubmit it as a as a Word document. Um, one thing that I can uh, caution you about if you have an iPhone, uh, Apple has a unique uh, extension. Uh, I think it's called IMEI. The Canvas can't read that yet, so make sure that you convert those into JPEGs before you submit it if you can actually take pictures. Anyway, so you just do the lab and then submit it however you want, um, as long as it's a system that Canvas can read. So PDFs, JPEGs are good. TIFFs, uh, PDFs, Word documents, all that stuff, you can submit it that way. And so um, I'm going to switch to student view so you can see what this looks like. So let's say you did the lab and you saved it. You've done all the edits. You drew it out or you did it on the computer, whatever. Um, so it'll when you click on it, it'll say submit assignment. Click on that, and then you can just choose the file. So you click on that, and you can choose whatever file off your computer. Uh, like, let's say this is my Word document. This is the syllabus, but let's say it's the Word document. I would just double-click on this, 
it would attach that file. I can add another file if you want to do them as separate individual pictures. Make so one thing uh, that's important is think think about from my perspective. If I can't read it, I can't grade it. So make sure that your pictures are clear and make sure that they aren't so small that I need a magnifying glass to actually uh, grade it because that is super annoying and you would be annoyed uh, having to grade that too. So uh, just in advance, make sure that it's a, a big enough uh, file that I can actually see it and read it. A lot of students will take individual pictures and and then add them into a Word document and that's totally fine. Just make sure they're big enough that you can actually, if you were grading it, you would be able to read it. And then just click Submit Assignment, and that's pretty much it. And then I'll grade it. Like I said, it takes me about a week. Um, and then uh, I will assign you a grade, and then you can see your grades in, in the grade section over here on the left. Okay. So this is showing the... Uh, Assignments by their due date. So the first thing you have to do is chemistry on February 2nd, uh, post a profile picture on February 7th, uh, this metric system uh, lab is due on February 9th, and then you need to start the plant variation lab because it's a multi week lab. But really, I don't think it's a multi week lab anymore since we're not going to. Last semester, people, all their plants died or half the class's plants died. So we just decided we're not going to do that again. Uh, so you don't need to start this early because you're not going to actually plant plants um, and I'll change that uh, before I publish this. You can also see it by your assignments by type so it'll show you the quizzes separated from the at-home labs, uh, separated from the extra credit, um, and then separated from the online exams. So we covered quizzes, we covered the at-home labs, Extra credit, uh, this is extra credit. You don't have to do it, but I strongly advise you to do it. Uh, one thing I will say is this blood donation lab, you don't have to actually donate blood. Uh, you ha just have to make an attempt. <coughs> so if you make an appointment, you go in there and they refuse you to do your blood. Maybe you don't weigh enough. Maybe you just had a tattoo. Uh, for whatever reason, just get a note, donation card, sticker or something as proof that you attempted it. I mean, hell, you could take a picture inside of it, um, and that would be fine. Uh, I just need to know that you made an attempt before I give away 25 points. Um, and then uh, I'll give you a point. So, like I said, you don't you could get a friend to donate for you, and that's acceptable too. Um, okay, so let's go back to assignments, and you just submit it the same way. So it's just submit your proof. Okay, extra credit, and then online exams. So online exams. The exams are worth 150 points. Sometimes they have uh, bonus questions in it, so they're worth more. Like this one's worth 153 because it has a bonus question in it. Um, one thing that I have to tell you is that uh, because it's a fully online class, you have to take your exam using Respondus Lockdown Browser. So Respondus Lockdown Browser uh, is a, a browser that you can download. Uh, when you go to take the exam, when you click on the exam, I'll click on the exam. It's not available, but when it, once it is, it's going to uh, let you do the Respondus Lockdown Browser. And I'm going to set up the Quiz 1 to actually be uh, a Lockdown Browser as well, so that you can make sure that it functions before you actually get to the point where you take the test. So on the in the Lockdown Browser, um, sorry, let me get to the assignments. In the lockdown browser, um, you it can't be an operating system that uses Linux. It has to be an iOS, otherwise a Mac system or a Windows system. Um, so Chromebooks will not work. iPads will, but phones don't. So you cannot use your phone. You can use an iPad or you can use any Mac or Windows system. But you cannot use a Chromebook unless you specifically go take it to the library and have them set it up for you to use a another virtual system. So if you or you can borrow a Mac or a laptop from the library at MCC. So if you have a Chromebook and that's all the only computer you have access to to take these exams, 
Uh, you're going to have to figure out a workaround to this um, because it's stated in when you signed up for the class that you cannot use a Chromebook. So um, we'll need to talk about that. Anyway, so once you click on this link, it will take you to respond to the lockdown browser. You download it, and then whenever you get ready to take your exam, you have to open that browser. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, Google Chrome or uh, Microsoft Edge or whatever, Fire, um, Mozilla, Firefox, and, except you can't uh, go in and out of the browser and you can't change screens. If it, if you do that, I will get a an alert, um, and that alert will let me know that you're in some way may potentially be compromising the exam. So I have to go back and review the video. But you're uh, you also have to have a webcam and a microphone, a hot webcam and a hot microphone when you take these so that I can monitor your activity just uh, because we've had students in the past that you know weren't uh, on the up and up when they were taking their tests um, anyway so I'm gonna leave the student view so you can kind of see how this works um, so I'm gonna go to leave student Assignments. By the way, this is my 19th year teaching this class. Okay. So when you click on that, it'll say you need uh, you need respondents lockdown for this exam, and over here. Uh, This is the lockdown browser that you'll need. And when you click on it, you get, it'll take you to that. Like I said, I'm going to make the first quiz lockdown. So the first quiz is lockdown. And if you click on that, um, in fact, I guess I could go back to the student view. But while you're, while we're in this view, I'll just go over the test real quick and then I'll go back to the lockdown browser. <clears throat> so you will need lockdown browser for this. Make sure that you've tested it by taking quiz one before you try this exam. You have two hours and 30 minutes to complete the exam, but it usually only takes an hour. You are allowed three blank sheets of paper. You have to number them. So you write the numbers in the upper right hand corner. One, flip it over, two, three, four, and so on. Um, you need to show the blank pages to the camera before you start the test. And then everything you show the camera at the beginning, you have to show to your web camera at the end. Um, you can take, you can use a periodic table of the elements again, print it out. Here's the link, um, right here. You can print this out, show it to the camera before and front and back, uh, before you take the exam. And then, uh, after front and back, you can use a calculator, but it can't be programming or graphing. You've got to show me your calculator before you take the test front and back. Um, you can get these at the dollar store and we'll talk about that. You'll need one with square roots, so make sure that you buy that. Pen and pencil, you can have beverage or food or whatever. I don't care. Just uh, just remember that I'll be monitoring you while you take these exams through your web camera. So don't do anything that would raise suspicion. No phone a friend. You can't wear headphones or any other listening devices. Uh, you can't use virtual machines. It has eye tracking software that watches that. It has systems to check for virtual machines and things like that. So trust me, there are lots of ways to get around this and I know about it. And so does the IT. So chances are, you know, you could try to get around it, but you're 99% of the chance you're going to get caught. And if you do, then I have to turn you into the Dean of Academic Affairs. And then they have to decide whether or not to expel you from this college. Uh, for academic dishonesty. So the best policy is do your best, uh, be honest about the exam, um, and then just follow the directions. All right. So I'm going to go back to student view. And we go to assignments. And then we'll do the first quiz. So this is the first quiz. It requires the respondents 
you can click on it and then it will tell you uh, if you haven't already installed the browser download it here so you can download it there um, it tells you how to install it you you know you'll you get it uh, download here I already have it on my computer so it's probably not gonna do anything but um, and then you just open it this is me trying to repair my computer upstairs so you open it um, I already have it so I'll just reinstall it while that's reinstalling I'll just go over um, the rest of the canvas stuff but anyway and then we can take this first quiz and you'll see how that works okay so I'm gonna leave student view So you have at home labs, extra credit, and then your online exams. That's what all your grades come from. So 10% of your grades are from the quizzes. 10 quizzes, there's 15 quizzes, but I can only count the highest 10. You get to take those three times, so that's like a free 100 points. Um, the at home labs are worth 25 points each. You get to drop two of them. So uh, that's a super no brainer. If you do it, you're usually going to get a full credit. You know, if you do half of it, you'll get half the points. I give partial credit. Um, if you turn it in late, it's 10% a day. I only accept one late assignment, so after that, you just take it to zero. You're allowed two past labs. I know life happens, so two of these you don't have to do. Um, or you can do them, and I just take the, the, the highest grades. So 25 points for each lab. I take the 12 grades for the labs, so uh, three, wait, yeah, wait, three, yeah, 300 points uh, for 12 uh, out of the 14 labs. Extra credit, there's about 70 points worth of extra credit. This is worth 10, this is worth 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 65 points in extra credit. So that's almost uh, a third of an exam grade. Um, and then each of the exams are worth 150 points. It may say that they're worth more than that, but that's just because uh, there's extra credit in there. But each of these are worth 150 points. So 600 points come from exams, um, 300 from labs, and 100 for quizzes. And then the it's pretty simple. So if you get a, a 900 to 1,000 points, you get an A. 800 to 899 is a B. 700 to 799 is a C. And then lower than that, you're going to get a D or an F, and you'll have to retake the class. Um, for discussions, you guys can open discussion boards in here and talk about things. I've already started a discussion. Uh, one of the labs you have is a population genetics lab. And if you click on this, um, you'll see that it's asking you if you have a bent or straight little finger. So you just put your finger down. If it bends inward at all, then it's a bent little finger and you can look it up online if you want if you're not exactly sure and then do you have a free earlobe or an attached earlobe and then I told you right here I answered this I have a bent little finger and an attached earlobe and then you guys uh, I want you to reply uh, to this as well so that we get enough statistical data to do the science uh, for that lab uh, in the class so everybody goes to the discussion and answer that but if you had another question in here like you wanted to add a discussion you can maybe you'd be like i uh i've been trying to do this cricket extra credit assignment and i can't get past this is anyone having this problem i don't mind it's not cheating if you guys uh discuss it among yourselves when you turn stuff in uh and i'm fine with that um what I do want will caution you is that if you take someone else's idea and use it as your own, that's plagiarism and that's wrong. And that's also part of academic dishonesty. So make sure that you write everything in your own words when you turn these things in. All right. Grades, I'm not going to open that, but the, the grades will be posted in here 
like I said, if it's grayed out, that means the computer is automatically dropping that. Remember, it drops the lowest five quiz grades and the lowest two lab grades. The, another thing that I'll tell you is that I will manually go in and replace your lowest exam grade with the, your final exam grade if your final exam is higher. So let's say you had a crappy week and you got a 60 on a test. Well, you can get a pass on that. Uh, so let's say you got 100 on your final. Then that 100 on your final would replace the 60 that you got on, let's just say, it's exam two. So your final would actually count twice because it's higher than your lowest grade. So you get a pass, you can have a crappy exam grade, and it still won't count against you as long as you do well on the final. The reason I do that is because you have a whole week to study it on the final by itself at the end of the semester, and so you'll have plenty of time to do well on that exam. Final is not cumulative. It only counts the, la the last three chapters. They just happen to be the hardest three chapters of the whole uh, class. All right. So there aren't any grades. It shows the people in the classroom. Um, so here's people. There are pages. There's links that I've put to uh, the web. So the crash course biology will, is helpful. There's the link to the scientific method cricket assignment, the properties of water, uh, different different videos on DNA replication, things like that. So the, these are external sources that you might want to use. Uh, there are also links to the labs on YouTube. So, so let's say uh, you want to know how to pour an agarose plate. Well, here's a video on how to do it. Growing bacteria is a very popular. Growing bacteria is a very popular. Easy steps. Plus, I'll show you some pretty cool bacteria cultures. To grow bacteria, you just need agar and petri this dishes. This will come in your kit that you have to get, and we'll cover that when we go through the syllabus. So th those are all the videos you should be watching when you do the at-home labs. Um, all right. Study mate, quizzes. Uh, there's a chat function if you want to chat with me. Um, I usually don't use that a lot. Um, online tutoring. Okay, so... The last thing we need to do is basically go over the syllabus. Um, all right, so here's the syllabus. Um, you can download it here if you want. Uh, it's for 181 for spring 2021. These are all the sections and labs that I'm teaching for 181. 181 isn't the only class that I'm teaching, so you know. Uh, so I'm your instructor. This is my office number. Um, they're not allowing us to go to our office except once a week, so um, I, I wouldn't leave a phone message there, although it does get emailed to me, and so I can get it, with, retrieve it remotely, but it's not very fast. The fastest way it, to get a response from me is to email me at overmiller at You can also email me in Canvas, but that's not as uh, robust either because I, get, I can get an email from you uh, through my email uh, outside of Canvas, but unless I'm logged into Canvas, I can't see the email, and then I can't respond to it unless I log into Canvas. So it's actually quite a complicated two, three-step process to reply to your email in Canvas. This, I have a smartphone, and I get this right away. So this is the best way to email me. Here's my office. If we ever do get to go back to person uh, in-person learning, uh, this is where my office is located. Uh, these are my office hours. We're going to do uh, Google Meet, uh, like I talked about before. Uh, Friday is by appointment only, so uh, even though I've scheduled Monday through Friday in the Google Meet calendar, I won't be there on Fridays unless somebody requests me to have office hours on Friday. On a Friday. Uh, we talked about lecture uh, lectures and lecture materials are all online, and I showed you how they, you can access those. We talked about PowerPoints, crossword puzzles, study guides, the MP3 recordings, the MP4 videos, the YouTube videos, and the Panopto videos. All of your exams will be online, and they'll be through Lockdown Browser, right? So you know that. You needed a webcam and a microphone. Um, and I will go over the materials and expectations in this video, which I already have, and I'll put that in the announcements in Canvas. 
labs are online and then we'll follow the schedule in canvas uh, like i said you have 14 labs 12 of them are you have to do and turn in for a grade um, you have to have a laboratory kit the laboratory kit is being made and built by 180 uh, uh, by the life science lab technicians um, and then uh, transferred to the bookstore because they have they have the uh, economic system to implement this um, this thing is supplemented by your lab fees <clears throat> so it, it actually costs more than ten dollars to build this thing and ship it out it's just that we're they're taking your twenty five dollar lab fee and rolling it into this lab kit so it ends up being like three dollars plus seven dollars shipping or something like that there is a possibility that you'll be able to pick it up at MCC however I don't think that's going to happen so you're you're going to need to order it by February 1st so you can get it uh, shipped to you by the 7th. Um, you don't need a kit for the first lab, the chemistry lab. You will need a kit for the second and third lab. So make sure that you order it well in advance. This is the link to it. So if you click on this, it should take you to the department um, to click on bio. The course is 181. The section, I think we're talking uh, 32402 would be, uh, four, sorry, 32410 is the lecture, but we want the lab, which would be for this class, 32411. Um, and so you can click on that. Just to make sure, it, it kind of got hokey or whatever, but anyway, so it shows here. Spring uh, 181 Custom Lab, it's $1.50, click on that, you want to buy it new, add it to the bag, enter in your information and your shipping, make sure that you do the lab, because if you do the lecture, it probably will come up with a textbook, so um, let's just say that your uh, 32410 is the lecture section, and then I'll click on that, and it will show you uh, Campbell Biology um this is the brand new edition i haven't even looked over this edition because it was released over uh in december and i'm not using this edition so uh you don't need to buy or rent this edition you can get a cheaper edition on amazon i'll show you um so this is the so this is the um 11th edition uh, this is this uh, one we were using up until December. Uh, this is where I've, I've taken most of the material out of. Um, but you can get an, an earlier edition, like the tenth edition. So if you click on this, this is like you can get it used from uh, twenty-five bucks. Um, you you can even go down to the ninth edition. Um, Here's the ninth edition. Um, you can get this used from eleven dollars and fifty cents. Um, so you don't need to spend a bunch of money on it. That, like I said, there's not a big bunch of changes. Uh, the publishers like to make new editions because it, you guys would buy and sell books, uh, and they wouldn't make any money. So they have to change twenty percent of the text in order to create a new edition and just to let you know most of what they change is the are the pictures because those count so if you're okay with older pictures i would buy the ninth edition and I re i'm recommending that to the all the students um just buy used uh ninth edition for you know eleven dollars plus shipping um and you'll be fine i don't most of the stuff material that comes out of chapter one doesn't come from the book. So as long as you get the book before we get into chapter two, you should be good to go. <clears throat> All right. So let's go back to the syllabus, the lab kit. Here's the textbook info that we just talked about. Uh, you can use the uh, 11th, 10th, 9th, 8th, even the 8th edition is fine if you want to do that. <clears throat> There's half editions that you can get. If you're only taking 181, which would apply to, say, nursing students, as opposed to, like, students that want to go to a physician assistant or dental or medical school or something like that. Or if you wanted to be a, 
uh, get a degree in biology, you would have to take both bio, uh, intro bio for majors one, which is 181, and two, which is 182. Uh, but if you're going into dental hygiene or uh, vet tech or something like that, you don't need both those semesters, so you can get a half edition book. Just read through that. If you have any questions, let me know. So this is important. Whatever version you buy of the textbook, we do not use that Mastering Biology CD. Do not buy that CD. It is not worth the money unless you want a digital edition of the textbook. Um, all of the labs materials will, are online or those certain things that you'll need to buy. Like you might have to go to the store and get some Cairo syrup or some rubbing alcohol or whatever. Most of the stuff will be in the kit or stuff that you have around your house. This talks about the computer requirements. Again, just to stress, you have to have iOS or Windows. You cannot use Chromebooks. You can use an iPad, but not an iPhone. You can't use an Android phone. It, those are the only options for taking the exams. Uh, like we said, this is the principles of molecular and cellular uh, levels of biology and so we only do small stuff you probably didn't read this but it, uh, one year of high school chemistry or one semester of college chemistry is highly recommended in the in the um, when you signed up for the class and I'm going to show you that real quick um, So if you click on that, so right here, the requisites are one year of high school or one semester of college level biology and chemistry is strongly recommended. So it's recommended, it's not required. Um, uh, I tell my students it's like uh, learning how to play the piano. Like So let's say I gave you a month to play a piano concerto from Mozart. Um, would you be able to learn it uh, in a month the same as someone else who already had a few piano lessons? And the answer is yes, but in order for you to get to that same level, you're going to have to practice more than they do. And, you know, when we talk about practice in... Um, school and classes um, you guys we call it studying but it's the same way that you get good at playing basketball or hitting a golf ball or whatever those professional golfers hit a thousand golf balls a day that's how they're so good and if you want to be good at biology you're gonna to have to buckle down and spend a lot of time good rule of thumb is two hours a week for every one hour in class so this is a four hour class you should be spending eight hours a week studying for this class if you want to do well. All right, so let's go back. We talked about the grading system. It's a thousand points. There, it's more than a thousand because you have extra credit. Four tests, 150 points each. Uh, ten quizzes. There's actually 15, but I dropped the five lowest. So 10 worth 10 points each. And then the labs, there's actually 14 labs, but I only count the 12 highest. Uh, and that gives you the, your 1,000 points. And then all you have to do is whatever that number is, divided by 1,000, and that's your percent grade. Canvas will give you that value if you click on grades automatically at the very end. Um, I reserve the right to change the assignments. They're probably not going to change 99% of the time. They're not going to change, but something might come up where, you know, there's a, a, a giant run on rubbing alcohol. So I have to change the lab or something like that. I'm going to download this because it's kind of small on the screen. Anyway, so uh, where were we? Uh, I don't give up makeup exams. If you miss an exam, that's fine. Remember that your final exam will count twice. Um, lectures online and self-paced. Uh, like I said, I'm going to make up a class. 
uh, it's going to be on Tuesdays and Thursdays for an hour and 15 minutes where I will do lectures, live lectures, and you're more than welcome to attend that. I'll put the link in Canvas. Um, otherwise, you can just go off of the videos that if you want. So the videos that are uh, on on uh, uh, YouTube or in Panopto. This talks about the 12 out of 14 labs. No makeup lab, so um, you get two uh, uh, possible drops. If you know, I call it a uh, life happens drop. Um, so you know, maybe you're having a, like a rough week or something's going on at your work, and you you know you just can't get it done. It's cool, just don't do it. Um, but remember, you're still responsible for for the material on the lab for the exam so make sure that you you still need to know the lab you can't just blow it off forever but make sure you know it for the test uh so i can withdraw you all the way to the very end of the class that means that you could take all of your grades and your final exam and i could calculate them and give them to you on the very last day which would be a friday of the semester grades are due the following monday and you could say, I don't want that grade, I want a W, and I can give you a W. That's not like ASU, where it has a hard drop date. You know, I don't have a drop-down screen that allows me to give you a W at, a, at the classes I teach at ASU. But MCC allows you to do that all the way down to the final day. So, you know, unless something really terrible is going on, you're probably going to have to retake this class. So you might as well just get as much information out of it as you can and not drop it. Uh, like, because I can drop you all the way to the very end. So, it, what's the difference if you drop it in the middle of the semester or the end of the semester? Um, I think that it's in your best interest to try to stick it out. Uh, in the end, you know, the tests are hard. The other stuff is give me's. So, your labs, uh, extra credit, all that other stuff will make up for poor exam grades. The class average in this every semester is about 80%. Um, you know, and that could be because a lot of people that don't have time to devote on this or are doing really bad drop, but that's pretty high actually for a science class. Um, so I wouldn't panic, uh, and just drop the class, but if you want, you let me know when you drop the class, you can drop it yourself all the way up to the drop date. After that, I have to drop you. This doesn't really apply classroom rules and visitation, um, Early alert, you can read about that. Veterans have a uh, special enrollment uh, thing that they can do. Um, we talked about the tutoring uh, help, and then this is the class schedule that I do for in-person. This is what I'm going to cover in the in-person lecture, so this is uh, where you should be. So, for example, if it's February 23rd and you haven't uh, started into Chapter 6, you're still in Chapter 4, you're like two weeks behind. So you need to uh, catch up. I was going to use the Pulp Fiction joke, but anyway. Um, that's pretty much the syllabus. Um, so, And that's pretty much the intro to the class. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, like I said, obermiller at mesacc.edu. Um, and then... Um, you know, I'm looking forward to meeting you guys and hopefully we'll have a great semester. Uh, so I will, I'm going to add in a, <clears throat> in this office hours here, I'm going to add in. I'm going to add in a, a lecture from uh, 145. That's not, that's only 15 minutes. I'm going to do 1245 to 2 p.m. And then afterwards I'll have office hours from 2 to 2.50. And then I have to get my kid from school. So once I figure out the URL, I'll add it in there. Maybe I'll add this later. Anyway, I'll add it in right here. Um, 
And then if you want to attend, you can. Like I said, you don't have to. You can just go straight to watching the videos on YouTube if you want. But I'm going to record those, and then I'm going to, I will update them, and I will put them on YouTube as well, so you can watch them even if you miss them. Uh, all right. So, uh, hopefully we'll have a great semester, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon.